Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to cover tips and tricks for Revit rooms that you did not know. Hit the big subscribe icon and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss any of the great content, especially if you are visiting this channel for the first time. We have great content for you in the pipeline and we are planning to share three to four videos per week for you so we can bring a lot of value to the industry and make a movement of BIM in the industry. We made a specific playlist for you that contains all the great tips and tricks for Revit. And also we have another playlist that has BIM content for you. Just hit the pop-up link above. Let's jump into the video. Before I show you great tips and tricks and some interesting features, how to create volumes out of the rooms, let's start with creating a couple of rooms and let's see what kind of settings we can play with it. So if I go ahead and create a couple of rooms over here, and before creating the next room, what I can do is simply I can go and room separator from the architecture tab, draw a line as a separation of the room and add another room right away. So when I'm adding rooms, you can see that they are marked in uh, blue color. So if I add another room here, room five, what I can do is if let's say, in this case, if this wall is foldable and I want to treat both rooms as one room rather than two rooms. So I'm going to go here and use a um, thinner wall. I will treat this wall as a foldable one, which potentially allows me to combine this room so it treats it as one room. Therefore, I can click on this wall and then click from here, room boundary option, check it out. And then you can see that the room boundary by clicking tab, you see that it marks both rooms in a way. So visually I might see one thing, but in the settings I might do adjustments to that. So this is really important and flexible in a large scale project because it adds a lot of flexibility and use into the projects. So the next thing I would like to show you is that actually the settings of the room. So if you go to architecture tab, rooms and area panel, you can go area and volume calculations. From here, right now as a default it's set areas only which is faster so in that case what i'm going to do is i'm select area and volumes or area only and then from here i can go let's say um in this case i would like to say as wall finishes it's fine by me so i will just select okay and when i do this setup here i can go and create one section right away through the building and then I will, I just want to see how my rooms are affecting. Before I do this setting, you can, you cannot, you will not be able to see the rooms in the sections because right now they are volumetric. So if I come over here in a room, let's say I want to select the room here, it's, it's, it might be hard to select. That's why I will go visibility and graphics options by clicking view a tab, visibility and graphics um, tool. And from here, I will select the rooms once I select the rooms, I will select interior fill checked in so I can see where my rooms are located. Here you can see that I can select my room now. Right now it's more flexible. And I can even add the tag of the room so I can see if this is room five and this is room four. So the question is right now, when you work with the volumes is how you organize the upper level of the volume. My rooms are higher right now, but it, you can see that it goes between the level one and level two. So I don't really get the right amount of volume, but I can stretch it more. So it's a little bit you know, difficult to manage. So what happens if I have a more complicated roof shape? Rather than having a straight line, I have, let's say, pitched roof. Let's see how it works. If I go to the level two, I will simply do a roof that is a pitch one. So I just randomly draw some kind of roof here, a little bit higher. In the level two. So actually I can do it on the level two right away. I will select all my walls by selecting over here, all the walls, selecting everything, selecting the walls. I can actually filter them out right away. So it will be easier for me and I attach to the roof. What I can do is I can go back to the section and then from the section, I can select the room area and I can stretch it up you can see that it actually follows a room shape. It's amazing, right? So it, just because there's a closed boundary and it's retreated as a boundary of this roof, this room is bounding 
as a binder factor, if I don't have this checked in, it will have this kind of effect. So I have to make sure that my exterior walls and the roof is bound, has a bounding option in order to have these effects. I just did undo. Coming back to the a lot of other settings here for the rooms, what you can do is you can easily create color fills for the rooms. So you can simply go and select, for example, I want, I want, I want to do this one bedroom. I want this one bathroom. I want this over here, another bathroom. And then I want to go in the annotate tab. I want to go into the color fill legend and put the color fill legend. And I will say rooms and by name. And it will color fill my rooms where I want. This is really a useful technique so you can easily visualize it. You can present things in an easy manner like that. And it will be easy to read as well. Coming back to the rooms, the last thing we are going to talk, talk about is the actual schedules. If you right click on the schedules, if you scroll down and find the rooms, and from here, if you select OK, we'll be able to have a lot of data. So I will start with the room name first, and I will start building downwards the number. And then area, I can have the level, which is uh, just on the name. And I can have the volume as well. So I will not go more than that. I will divide my screen into two. So I will have my floor plans and then my schedule. So you can see the facts right there and then. What I can do is I can go to architecture tab, room and area, again, the side back to the settings. And from here, this time, I'm not going to select the whether it's area only or area and volumes, but instead I will select wall at center. As soon as I do that, you see my square feet changed of the area. And if I do it again, if I go back and avoid completion at core layer or core center. In this case, most probably I have core center is the same as my wall center, so it will not change anything. But if I go back to the finish, you will see that the areas will be reduced slightly in order to alter that change. Because when I have a, at the wall centers, my rooms are actually extending to the wall centers. And when I have it a finish, it extends only at the face of the wall, so which you can see visually by selecting the area, finish, and then by clicking tab. By selecting the room, you can actually see that it stops at the finish face of the walls. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because every week we are publishing a lot of BIM and Revit content for you. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on. See you next time.